evidence suggests that the risk of major central venous line complications, particularly line-related bloodstream infections, is lower when the subclavian approach is used. This video will identify the landmarks and procedure for placement of a subclavian central line. Specific contraindications for the placement of a central venous line in the subclavian vein include infection of the area overlying the target vein and thrombosis of the target vein and fracture or suspected fracture of the clavicle or proximal ribs. Coagulopathy, while not an absolute contraindication, should be of greater concern with the subclavian approach because of the difficulty in applying direct pressure to the artery and vein as they pass under the clavicle. To assure that there is the highest level of sterility, the operator should wear a sterile gown and gloves, as well as a surgical cap, mask, and face shield. Most of the equipment can be found in commercially prepared kits, and should include skin preparation solution, sterile towels or drape sufficient to cover the entire body, 1% lidocaine, sterile 4x4 gauze, non-lure lock or slip tip syringes which are easy to remove from the needle, a number 11 blade scalpel, saline or heparinized flushing solution, a catheter with the appropriate length and number of lumens, a compatible skin dilator, usually one French larger than the line, an appropriate sized needle, a guide wire of compatible size which will pass through the catheter and needle, suture, and a needle driver. There are numerous types of central venous catheters to choose from. Seven French triple lumen catheters of either 15 or 20 centimeter length are most commonly used in adults. For resuscitation or dialysis, large bore catheters are preferable since there is less resistance to flow than the smaller bore types allowing for much higher infusion rates, although large-bore peripheral IVs often allow even more rapid fluid administration than central venous lines. For small adults and children, or for those in whom access to the subclavian vein is difficult, five French and four French catheters can be used. If there are no contraindications, Proceed by placing the bed in a 10 to 15 degree Trendelenburg position to decrease the risk of air embolism and to engorge the vein. Turn the patient's head so that the chin points away from the vein. A small roll can be placed under the spine to help make the clavicles more prominent. Identify the clavicle. The subclavian vein flows just under the middle third of the clavicle while the artery runs posterior and superior to the vein. The middle third begins at the point where the clavicle angles posteriorly and is joined by the costoclavicular ligament. It is only in this middle third that the vein closely approximates the clavicle. Because ultrasonography does not penetrate bone, usage is more challenging than in internal jugular placement. But several articles suggest it facilitates placement. To identify landmarks using ultrasonography, place the probe just proximal to the insertion site. The vein and artery can be distinguished either by the compressibility of the vein or by using Doppler flow to demonstrate pulsatility in the artery. Prepare the area by scrubbing the skin with chlorhexidine for 60 seconds and drape the site. Be sure to include all landmarks within the sterile field. If the patient is conscious, Explain that his or her face will be covered, but that breathing will not be obstructed, and that he or she can signal for attention by raising his or her hand. Flush the lumens of the central line with saline or heparin, and ensure that the guide wire threads easily through your needle. Remove the cap from the port through which the guide wire will be threaded. This is commonly the longer lumen. In a patient who is awake or minimally sedated, the skin should be infiltrated with a local anesthetic, such as 1% lidocaine, with a 25-gauge needle to help minimize pain on insertion of the catheter. Using the insertion needle, approach the site at a 30-degree angle to the skin, with the long axis of the needle directed toward the sternal notch. Puncture the skin just lateral to the middle third of the clavicle. Continue to aim toward the sternal notch with the needle tracking just beneath the clavicle, avoiding penetration into the deep tissues of the neck. Typically, the vein is accessed immediately beneath the clavicle, although needle penetration under the skin may reach several centimeters. 
An assistant should watch the monitor, looking for signs of arrhythmia, during advancement of the guide wire. Arrhythmias indicate that the wire has reached the heart. If arrhythmias occur, withdraw the wire slightly until they cease. After the guide wire has been inserted, withdraw the needle, leaving the guide wire in place. Using an 11-blade scalpel, make a small superficial incision at the entry point of the wire to facilitate passage of the dilator through the skin. Be careful not to cut the wire. Place the dilator over the guide wire, being certain to maintain control of the wire at all times in order to prevent a wire embolism, and advance the dilator 1 to 2 centimeters by holding it close to the tip and rotating it. Be careful not to introduce a bend or kink in the guide wire. Remove the dilator, anticipating increased bleeding. Maintain a grasp on the wire. A 4x4 gauze pad can be applied to the insertion site to minimize blood loss. Once again, only the wire remains in place. Now, feed the catheter over the guide wire, being certain to maintain control of the external end of the wire before advancing the catheter through the skin. This usually requires that the wire be pulled slightly out of the patient until the external end of the wire extends out of the catheter hub and can be grasped. While grasping the external end of the guide wire, advance the catheter over the wire using a rotating motion. If resistance is met, the track may not have been adequately dilated. Remove the catheter and try again to insert the dilator. Insert the catheter to a depth that places the tip at the junction of the superior vena cava and the right atrium. Remove the guide wire and check for blood return in all ports. Flush all ports, place caps on the hubs, and secure the line in place. Apply a sterile dressing before removing the drape. Obtain a chest x-ray to assess for proper placement and to assure that no hemothorax or pneumothorax has occurred. All sharps should be properly disposed in approved sharps containers. Scalpels should be retracted into their protective sleeves. Needle stick injury can be minimized by using needle lock devices found in most commercial central line kits. There are some common problems that can occur during placement of a central venous line. Puncture of the adjacent artery is usually obvious if pulsatile or bright red blood flows into the syringe. However, in patients with hypotension, hypoxemia, or both, it may be difficult to differentiate placement in the artery from that in the vein. The possibility of this complication should be recognized before the wire is inserted. If the catheter is in place and its location in the artery is suspected, the line should be connected to a transducing system. Pulsatility or any pressure higher than 30 millimeters of mercury or approximately 30 centimeters of hydrostatic pressure is probably arterial in nature. Ideally, transduction should occur before the wire is passed and should be performed routinely. If arterial puncture occurs, remove the catheter and place firm direct pressure on the site for 10 minutes or until there is no further bleeding. Occasionally, air may be aspirated into the syringe. If this occurs, check the syringe to be sure that the needle or catheter and syringe are firmly attached. If so, immediately remove the needle or catheter since there may be a pneumothorax at that site. This is especially important if the patient is having symptoms of increasing respiratory distress. Immediately obtain a chest x-ray and insert a chest tube if necessary. For persistent bleeding at the catheterization site, apply direct pressure and check the results of coagulation studies. Replace blood products as necessary. If bleeding continues, there may be an arterial or venous tear that requires surgical exploration. In any of these circumstances, do not attempt to place the line at the opposite site since you risk contralateral pneumothorax and further respiratory compromise. If arrhythmias are seen on the monitor, the line may be in the heart, in which case the line will need to be pulled back. By approximating the necessary length of the wire before catheterization and confirming its placement with a chest x-ray, this problem can be avoided. Always be sure to work within a sterile field when placing a central venous line and to keep the site clean after placement 
to prevent local or systemic infection. If the wire will not thread through the needle, you may need to adjust the placement of the needle, since it may have inadvertently been advanced during manipulation. If so, adjust the needle and re-aspirate to be sure that you are still within the vessel. If you are unable to re-establish blood flow, remove the needle and start over. If the vein has been difficult to cannulate, the presence of a clot in the needle will further complicate assessment of whether the vein has been successfully entered. In this circumstance, remove the needle and flush it thoroughly with saline to clear it before reattempting placement of the line. A sterile dressing should be placed on the insertion site. The dressing should be changed daily and whenever blood or liquid accumulates or it loses its seal. In order to minimize the potential for infection in the central venous line, the following precautions should be observed. The number of times the line is accessed should be kept to a minimum. Each time the line is accessed, this should be done under either sterile or clean conditions. The access site should be prepared with an alcohol-based solution. There should be a daily assessment to determine whether the central line is still needed so that it can be removed as soon as it is no longer necessary. A central venous line is a convenient and often necessary tool in the treatment of the critically ill patient. However, one must always be aware of the potential for infection.